Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. In this tutorial, we're looking at the single tone design pattern in PHP. This is a way we organize code. Design patterns are ways in which we organize code in order to solve a specific problem. So when you have a large project, you run into the risk of creating too many objects in there and running out of memory. So for example, you've got a class that handles, let's say, logging of information as people use the website. So you can use the singleton pattern to avoid creating too many instances of that particular class. Another example is the database class, uh, because when you have a database class, uh, you are connecting to the database every time you create a new instance of that database class and you run the risk of having too many connections to the same database. I've had that problem uh, in real world projects where you have too many users on a website and you forget that you're instantiating the database several times and then you get an error that's saying too many connections to the database. So to fix that problem, we can create the singleton uh, version of things. So what the singleton does is, let's say for example, we have a class named logger just to log uh, information into a file, for example. Now, this could be a very large class or it could be taking up so much resources. So what we want is to not be, to instantiate it once and then prevent any further instantiation. So even though we do a new instance, it still, it still brings us the old instance. That way we save memory. So let's see how we can implement this singleton pattern here. So this class is what I have. Now I'm going to create a private uh, variable here, or also known as a property. And it's gonna be static because I want it to be accessible in static mode. So we don't have to instantiate the class to get this value. This is why I'm gonna make it static. And it's private because I don't want it accessible outside the class. So I'm just gonna call it instance. So this is where we're going to store our instance itself. So for a start, it's gonna be equal to empty, which is null. Now it's a good practice to specify what type of data we're expecting in this instance. Uh, and in this case, it's gonna be the logger class itself. So that's a data type. It's not a string or an integer, it's a logger. Now, currently, it's not set to logger. It's set to null. So this could cause a problem uh, because we expect it to be logger. So what we can do is, if we expect it to be more than one type, we can put a question mark here that says, sometimes this value is gonna be null or empty, right? Okay, so we have that set. Now we want to prevent people from instantiating or others from instantiating or ourselves from instantiating this class. So what we'll do is we'll create a private function. Uh, this is the constructor. So construct. So we won't implement this. We won't add any code to this, right? And we also want to prevent uh, anyone from cloning this uh, object. So we're just gonna uh, look at the magic method clone and put it there like that. We make it private so that it's not accessible. And then we want an, a publicly available function which is static so we can access it in static mode without instantiating the class. And this one is get instance. Now you can name this function whatever you want I'm just naming it get instance because I'm gonna be using it to grab the actual instance from within this class. Okay, so this one will just check to see if an instance exists, which is this private thing here. So we're just gonna say return. Now, when you are, you've instantiated a class, you can use the, this keyword like this to grab properties, but we haven't instantiated this class because this is in static mode. So we're gonna use the keyword self like that. So this is how we 
grab uh, items from within an, in, an instantiated class. So we return that, but we have to make sure that it contains something before we return it. So we're going to say if self like that uh, instance is equal to null like that then we have to instantiate it so I'm just gonna say self instance again is equal to new logger I guess you could do new self as well I think that probably would work I don't know you can try it so like that and then by the time we're here we know that self instance is equal to something useful right so next time we won't have to create a new instance because the next time around this is not going to be null then it means we just return the same instance so once we create it we are returning the exact same instance over and over again and then now we can have a function that is going to work in instance mode for example the actual action like to log so let's create that one that will actually do the logging and when we are logging our information we are sending a specific message like that this is a string like so okay uh, this won't return anything so we just set it to void like that now this one will return the logger like that because it's returning an instance of itself okay and uh, that should do it actually now in here how do we actually save to a file so I'm just gonna create a file and name it uh, log for example dot txt and then I'm just gonna say file put contents to save to that file and that's the file name and the data uh, we're just gonna call it data now and I want a flag uh, file append so that we append to the file uh, in case it already exists alright so what's the data we want to save so data is gonna be equal to the date and time the current date and time for example so I'm just gonna do this Why is this uh, brackets like so and then let's do the let's use the date function let's concatenate the date like that what's today the year uh, month and day the hour uh, seconds and minutes whether it's a.m. or p.m. Uh, and then we input the message that we want to save and then to that let's add the PHP and uh, what do you call that one end of line right e o l something like that okay so now we can save the data in this file and append to it uh, sorry about that it's like that okay so this is gonna save line by line in this file so let's try that so in this case let's see how the usual uh, thing would work so instead of saying new logger let's try this and say log is equal to new logger okay something like that so let's see what happens when we try to do this so I'm gonna go to my uh, my browser and let's refresh I've loaded uh, this particular file on the server okay so you see we get an error it says call to private logger construct from global scope so we can't do that so instead uh, we're going to say log is equal to and we run this logger in static mode and then say get instance like that okay so this will create the instance for us and send it back and once we have that now we can say log log which is the function and what message do you want to log in there uh, user has logged in something like that okay and then if 
another time I decide to say again log or just call it logger something like that it's much easier to imagine logger2 is equal to new oh sorry uh, we do the same thing logger and uh, get instance and then we can log again a different message this time logger log what are we logging here uh, user as mm, what what do they do uh, edited a post or something like that okay now I want some time to pass uh, between these so I'm just gonna tell PHP to sleep a little bit for like two seconds and then do this again alrighty then guys so let me try and run this code in our browser here and refresh let's see what we get All right so we don't get anything here because it's just logging in the background of course but I can now check to see if I have a file and there it is the log.txt and if I check you see this is the logged information in there so users logged in at this hour and then two seconds later the user has edited a post so this is very useful especially with database connection uh, to avoid having too many connections on your project all right so i hope you've learned something in this tutorial in the next video we're going to look at a different design pattern see you then